Hello guys, welcome back to 7th grade online Latin. Uh, I hope you had a good weekend. And welcome to the second to last chapter of the year. So that's kind of exciting. I know, I think in general students and, uh, you know, uh, are, are getting kind of sick or tired of the uh, online classes. We're probably all mostly ready for this to come to an end. But we're getting there, right? We have, uh, what, like four more weeks, and in terms of Latin, it, it really is just two more chapters, and I would say this is the last hard thing you have to do all year. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get into chapter 20 just a little bit, which is the fourth noun declension, which is kind of exciting, maybe, and, and that's not too hard, whereas this, I I guess I describe this as like the, the big final boss of the, of the semester. It's really not that hard. I don't want to overstate it, but it is kind of tricky. And for those of you who have not quite developed uh, a an actual interest in grammar, uh, which hopefully some of us are maybe getting to that, but I don't totally blame you if you don't. Uh, then you know this might be a little boring, but I believe in you. I I know that you can keep up with this. Uh, that there's something kind of interesting about it. Uh, we'll we'll get to it. Um, yeah. So we're getting there, guys. All right. So today we're gonna get notes on chapter 19. Uh, there, there's actually quite a bit of no. I'd say that's the only thing about this chapter is that there's, there's like, uh, there's like two semi-substantial grammar concepts, and so we'll just do one for today, and you won't really have much to do in the form. I think I'm gonna link the uh, a Quizlet deck of the new vocabulary for this chapter just for you to kind of go through once or twice to get a sense of the new vocabulary. But that'll be about it. Um, we'll finish the notes on Wednesday, and then you'll you'll do some exercises on that day. And then we'll check those exercises on Friday, and we'll also check the translation quiz that you got uh, that you all did on Friday. Uh, hopefully that went well. Um, we shall see soon enough. Okay, so chapter 18 was about these new passive verbs, which hopefully you guys are starting to kind of get used to and not be too intimidated by. They're really not so bad. Uh, they, they mostly amount to these six new endings and uh, the, the, this new way of translating verbs. So, er, restore, more, many, and untor uh, are translating as uh, I am a verb, you are verbed, it is verbed, we are verbed, y'all are verbed, they are verbed. And, of course, there are uh, plenty of verbs in English that don't actually get the, the E, D ending, um, but uh, hopefully you kind of know what I'm implying there. Uh, the verb is uh, happening to the subject when the verb is passive instead of uh, actively happening to a direct object, right? So we're still getting used to that. And if you remember, we got three tenses. We, we got present passive, future passive, and imperfect passive. And so maybe some of you were wondering, what about the perfect system? Are we going to get perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect passive? Hopefully not, uh, is what you might have thought to yourself. Unfortunately, we are going to get that. We're getting the perfect passive system. So it's basically just three more tenses uh, in terms of these, these passive verbs that are, that are happening to their subject. And the kind of maybe actually interesting thing about this, uh, even if you're not a, not a big Latin head, uh, you, you might be able to see that this is kind of cool. Um, if you look all the way at the bottom of the screen, you see that fourth principal part uh, of our verb there? Uh, we've never used those, right? We're going to use those for the very first time this chapter. So that is one of the things that those fourth principal parts accomplish, is that they are used for this perfect passive form of a verb. Uh, yeah, well, that's kind of cool to me, at least. All right, so let's go through these and talk about them uh, one, one at a time. Once again, it, it basically amounts to six different like new forms slash endings uh, of verbs that we've already known. And they're just going to be translated in ways that are pretty similar to present passive, but just ever so slightly different. So I'll read those those two little paragraphs there in the middle, and then I'll just go through these uh, one by one. So perfect passive participles, and that, that's what we call the fourth principle part of a verb. Don't worry about what the word participle means yet. Uh, that's just how we're going to refer to that fourth principle part. Um, but we won't really need that term, honestly. Um, they're combined with sum. So remember sum essay, you know, I am, to be, just means to be. We're going to take the fourth principal part of this verb and then put it right next to a form of sum essay. And that's how we get our perfect passive. Like, that's that's it, really. Uh, obviously, easier said than done a little bit, but that's about it. Um, the same pattern is used for all verb conjugations. Um, 
Yep. So, so we're probably gonna, we're looking at laudo laudare, which is a first conjugation verb from chapter one. But uh, th this is how this is, happens to all verbs. This is how the perfect passive is accomplished with every verb. So let's look at that very first person, first person singular version. Laudatus a um sum. Now ignore that I'm putting all the like the adjective endings there. Laudatus a um. um uh, we'll talk about um, those endings later, but that's just going to reflect the case number and gender of the subject. But more importantly is the sum, right? So sum by itself, that means I am. Remember, that is a verb we looked at back in chapter 6, I believe. Uh, and um, so if the verb is needing to be first person and singular, you're going to take the fourth principal part from the dictionary entry, which in this case is uh, liberatum. You're going to make the ending match, like I said, the case number and gender of the subject. And then you're going to get the first person singular version of sum esse, which is sum. And the way we translate that is I was praised or have been praised. Either way, I suppose was is a little quicker. So you might just want to go with that. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much identical to the way we translate the imperfect passive. So if we jump back to our regular present passive, I am a verbed as present passive first person singular. Versus now this first person perfect passive is I have been praised. So the tense is working in the same way we've always known perfect to work. Hopefully we know that. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's that. Second person, uh, laudatus s. You were praised or you have been praised. Pick or choose either way. Uh, second person singular version of sum esse is s, so that's the only thing that's actually going to change there. Third person singular est, laudatus est, it was praised, it has been praised. It's not bad, right? Uh, nominative plural, so you can see the endings of the participle part of the verb, the, the, the part of the left, the actual part that looks like the, the verb that is actually being translated, um, is then those are the plural endings now. So laudati, laudatai, laudata, sumus. We know sumus by itself normally means we are. So in this case, when it's right next to a participle version of a verb, it's going to be we were verbed or we have been verbed. Uh, the confusing thing about this is that, you know, sumese, those are present tense forms, but when they're showing up in this context next to a fourth principle part, it means this is the perfect passive. So don't get fooled by the fact that sum essay are present. If we want something to be present passive, that's when we use the endings from last chapter, ra, ris, tor, uh, more, many, intor. So this is what we do if we want it to be perfect passive. Second person plural, laudati, I, a, uh, estis. Estis is, so that's going to be y'all were praised or have been praised. And then last but not least, third plural, uh, suit. We will whip out suit. Uh, so they were praised, they have been praised. Hopefully this isn't seeming too bad to you guys. If anything, maybe it's seeming dreadfully boring. Um, but I hope it's not seeming like super uh, difficult. Basically, it's like if you do okay with this chapter, the last chapter, then this isn't too bad. It's just kind of an expansion pack uh, for, for last chapter. Um, yeah. And, and the, the tutorings are going well, guys. So please do reach out if you want to set up a tutoring I think for this chapter, we, we finally, well, I, I've, I've mentioned it before, and it didn't happen last week, but I think we really should have a uh, uh, an open, uh, semi-optional tutoring um, this or next week. Because like I said, I, this is truly the last hard thing you guys are going to have to learn uh, this year. Um, this is it. This is the peak of uh, y'all's second year of Latin. So uh, just, just hang in there. Uh, this, uh, okay, so we can also do... Future perfect, right? Uh, will have verbed type verbs. And for that, we're just going to use the future tense version of sum esse, right? So ero, eris, erit, erimis, eritis, erunt. Hopefully you guys recognize that a little bit as being just the future form of sum esse. So we just take all the present tense forms of sum esse and make them future. If we want it to be future perfect passive instead of just perfect passive. That makes sense, right? Uh, so this will be, I will have been verbed. You will have been verbed. The way to translate this is maybe the easiest, it's the easiest one, because uh, it's always just will have been verbed. Uh, you know, nothing is changing. The, the pronoun, or the, I mean the subject, like I or you or it, is going to change. And the verb itself, whether it's praised or taught or led or whatever the verb, that'll change. But the will have been, that's the same. It's always going to be the same.
Um, yeah, so that note uh, is just saying that we're using the future version of Sum Essay. And then last but not least is the imperfect uh, form of Sum Essay will be used for the, bear with me, pluperfect passive. So, um, oh, sorry, that's this slide. So that's the imperfect form of Sum Essay. Eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, erat. I was, you were, it was, uh, etc. when they are by themselves. But here, right next to a participle buddy, which Laudatus is, it's going to be I had been praised, right? Emphasis on had, plu, perfect, had, era, E-R-A. All of those things should be linked in our minds. So I had been praised. You had been praised. It had been praised. We had been praised. So on and so forth. Again, we're using the imperfect version of Sum Essay to accomplish this plu, perfect, passive. It's not that bad, right? Um... Maybe some of you are thinking, oh, why is he overhyping this? Like, it's it's hard. This doesn't seem bad. If you're, if you're not feeling that way, if you're thinking, uh, this does seem a little hard, um, remember, it might just seem hard because it seems boring, uh, but but give it a give it a try uh, uh, in terms of, like, um, just uh, uh, giving it your best shot in, in terms of when we actually translate. All right, let's do these four translation examples. And then we'll look at the vocabulary, and it will be done for the day. Um, okay, so puella laudata est. What is that going to translate to, anyone? We have a perfect passive. Go figure. Laudata est is perfect passive, and it's from the same verb we've been using for our examples the whole time, laudo, laudare, to praise. So what would that be, anyone? It looks like the subject is puella. Hmm. So this will translate to the girl was praised or has been praised. Uh, and we're going to compare that to the one below, which is just present passive. So puella laudator, that's just present passive. So that would translate to the girl is praised. Uh, don't worry about the being. That's super optional. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, so uh, the subject is verbed is our present passive versus our new perfect passive, which is just was verbed or has been verbed. Which, again, is the same as the imperfect passive, but don't worry about that. Uh, okay, so just notice how our helping verbs are having to change. I'm realize, realizing that that is probably maybe the, the, the trickier, trickiest thing about passives is the helping verb kind of shifting depending on the person and number of the verb. Uh, um, yeah, the endings aren't too hard to recognize, but you have to be quick on your feet about knowing what helping verb to use. So maybe right now... Uh, just make a, make a decision about if you're going to translate the perfect passive as was verbed or if you're going to translate it as has been verbed. Either one is fine. Uh, j maybe just, just right now you can pause the video and decide, do I like the, the helping verb was and were or uh, has or have been better? Which one do you like more? One is one word and one is two. So, you know, was verbed is probably the, the easy way to go with this. Uh, all right, we got two more examples. Puella laudata errant. Um, okay, so that's the same as the first example, except instead of laudata est, it's laudata erat. So it won't be just perfect passive. It's either going to be pluperfect passive or future passive. Hmm, an erat, that's imperfect, which kind of has a connection to the pluperfect, so maybe it's pluperfect. Uh, so that is pluperfect passive. So the girl had been praised. So plu, perfect, era, had been praised. Plu perfect. Uh, someone please email me a better mnemonic for remembering the plu perfect tense. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, you want to use had instead of has, basically. That, that's it. That's really it. Uh, and then our last one, literae scripti erunt. Hmm, erunt. That UNT makes me think of the UNT in bunt cake. So is that plu perfect passive or is it future perfect passive? And it's going to be future perfect. So that would be the letters will have been written. So we have to get, look, look at all three of those helping verbs we have to bust out for the future perfect. Will and have and been. Uh, all of those need to come out to play for the future perfect passive. So some of this is going to hinge on you really knowing the difference between your, the three tenses of sum essay. So you need to know the present tense of sum essay, sum es est, sum es est assumed. You need to know the future version, ero, eris, erit, etc. And the pluperfect, eram, eras, erat, eramus, erat, is erat. So we might have an activity on Wednesday, as I'm saying this right now, I'm realizing that that'd be a good idea, uh, where we, we, we make sure we're, we're doing real good on, on the uh, 
tenses of sum esse, and I'll maybe throw up some resources for that. Uh, last little thing, and we're basically done, is do notice, see how I bolded the A-E ending of literai, scriptai? Uh, again, this is not something that's going to be too difficult, but the the participle part of this perfect verb is, is basically behaving like an adjective, and that it's going to take on the ending in terms of case, number, and gender of the subject. So the subject of that one is letters, and so since it's ending in A-E, nominative plural, feminine, scriptai is also going to end in nominative plural feminine. And that just kind of helps us know exactly what the subject is and, and, and know what the gender and the number of it is. And, and yeah, that, that, that really is just helpful. It's not like a tricky part of it. The tricky part is probably more going to likely be the tense of and maybe person and number of the sum essay that is at play, whether it's erat, erunt, or est. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, I guess there is one more thing. And um, uh, some participles to look out look out for. So, so like with laudo, laudo laudare, um, laudatus. I mean, that looks exactly like laudo laudare, right? You wouldn't look at that and not think it's related to laudo laudare. But there are some fourth principle parts that are a little unfamiliar looking. So you just want to be careful about those. Like with deo, the fourth principle part is a weasus sum. So that looks pretty different. Uh, that's related to words like visual or visualize. So sometimes there's a related word that's related only to the fourth principle part. We might have already noticed that. Iwo iware, that second one, that's a verb everyone always forgets as it is. It means to help. But iutus, that is a very different looking fourth principle part. Usually they are not that different looking. So message is weird. That one won't come up. Audeo is a little weird. Alsus sum, uh, meaning like I have been dared. Ago is not too hard. It's octus. Uh, ago, ago can mean to act, so it kind of makes sense that the fourth principle part is octus, as in like actor or act, um, something that has been done. I have been spent, done. That probably wouldn't, uh, I mean, that, that could come up in a very specific context. Um, gero, gerera, gestus is a little weird looking. Traho, trahara, uh, we actually use that fourth principle part to help us remember traho, trahara, because it looks like the word tractor. We get the word tractor from that. So I have been dragged. Uh, vivo, vivera, victusum, that one's a bit different, right? Victus. Uh, we get words like victim and, and stuff like that from, well, actually scratch that. Uh, that's from something else. But uh, yeah, victus, uh, where is the C coming from? Who knows? That one's a little different. Uh, four more. Mito, mitra, missus, sum. Missus, as in like Mrs. Potato Head, uh, but it's spelled differently. So that would be I have been sent. That one's a bit different, I suppose. It, it looks kind of like the perfect uh, third principle part. Kato, katara. Kasuras sum. That one's way different. I don't think that's come up for my older kids, so but I don't have to worry about that. So stare is status. So we get the word status from that. Status is like the way things are in terms of like how things are. Uh, so yeah, I, I have that wouldn't come up as you can see with my uh, example with the question mark. Uh, that wouldn't really um, I don't think come up too much. Kuro is cursus. We get the word course from that. I have been run. Maybe okay. Uh, all right, we have, uh, it's not really a new pronoun, but we'll talk about it on Wednesday. That's why I'm going to split it up, because, yeah, there's kind of a lot going on in this chapter. So we'll talk about that on Wednesday, and then we'll be done with the grammar. Um, here is the vocabulary. Uh, let's see, I might just gloss through this real quick and see if there's any weird ones or something worth mentioning. And then I will link, like I said, the Quizlet deck. So argumentum can just mean argument, but can also mean proof or evidence. Actor is author. Uh, beneficium is benefit. That's easy. Familia, go figure. Grykia, go figure. Eudex is judge or juror. So that might one might be weird to you. But think of the I as being a J. Um, like how, you know, like Latin J's are interchangeable with I's. They didn't really use J. Uh, so that like, if you think of the word like judicial or, or judicate, um, that might help. And then eudicium is judgment or decision, and that's second declension. So whereas eudex, eudicius means the person, and that's third declension. Second declension, that's a thing that the judge actually does, and that's second declension neuter. Scalascalaris means evil deed, crime, sin, wickedness, second declension neuter. Uh, we get some pronouns, which we'll talk about tomorrow Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Caritus means certain or definite. Um, yeah, gravis, grava means heavy or weighty, as in gravity or grave. Immortalis means immortal. Uh, so if you notice, they're giving us a fair share of, of, of softball ones. 
uh, probably because the grammar is pretty substantial this chapter. So they're going to ease up on us for vocab to the point where we probably won't have a dedicated vocab quiz. Uh, ought means but. Um, Nisi means if, dot, 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 uh, or it can mean unless. Contra is a new preposition. That's worth noting. It means against. And ia means now or already. And delecto delectare means to delight. Uh, libero liberare means to free. That one's easy. And then para parare means to prepare. Though I don't know why I'm not saying it, but do notice the fourth principal parts of verbs now more than ever. When we learn a verb, we need to look at all four principal parts. All right. I hope you guys click through the Quizlet deck at least once to get familiar with these. We will learn more grammar on Wednesday. I will try as hard as possible to not make it too dense and boring and dry. And we'll do actually some actual translations. So you'll, you'll get to see this actually in practice. And when you actually start doing it, you'll probably hopefully see like, oh, it's not really not that bad. It's mostly bad when I'm just hearing someone describe it over a YouTube video after I've already watched uh, roughly 50 plus videos over the course of the past month. Um, all right. Uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And thank you.